Starting your day off with a take on Vegas you won't get anywhere else. Hi, I'm Holly Madison, and I listen to Brian Shapiro. Hi, this is William Shatner, and I listen to Brian Shapiro. Hey, this is Larry the Cable Guy, and I listen to Brian Shapiro. Why? Because I'm a good American. So is he. And if you don't listen to him, you need to pack up and leave this country. This is the Vegas Take with Sharp and Shapiro. Welcome all again! Oh, yeah, that's right. It's that time again. Glad you could join us. It is the Vegas Take. Sharp and Shapiro on a Tuesday. A lot to get to. You want to talk about a busy news day? Oh, yeah, we had it. Coming up in hour number two, we're going to go the sports route in hour number two and an exclusive interview with one of former UNLV head coach Marvin Menzies' assistants, Eric Brown. Uh, no one's really made some public comments except for a few weird comments by one of their assistants, LaFleur. Uh, but other than that, no comments have been made from the former coaching staff. So we'll get to Eric Brown. Now, I mentioned former coaching staff. So who's going to be the next head coach? A guy who has been on top of this story. We have as well. But Mark, Mark Anderson from the Review Journal, I think he just does a fantastic job. He's going to be joining us at 730 to give us an update on that. So that'll be hour number two. Hour number one, we got a lot to get to. We're going to talk to him uh, about Michael Avenatti. I wish we were talking to him, but we're going to talk about him. This Nike scandal, it might involve Mark Garagos. Yeah, we're going to get to all that. But before we get to our first subject of the day and, and, and what has driving me nuts, let me introduce the panel. Is it really a panel? I don't know. Well, my co-host is here, J.D. Sharp. I don't really have to introduce J.D. He's here. He's here. Aren't you? Are you here? I don't know. You're, I, I see you. You're here. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm here, Brian. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, Ron Futrell. <laughs> I, Ron, I, I'm clearly in the building. Good. Ron Futrell is here as well. Ron, you join us every Tuesday. I appreciate I'm, it. How I'm are the you? ghost. I'm the ghost. <laughs> I'm doing, doing well. It's been a great last two or three days or so, so it's just been fun times. We will get to the Mueller report in a little bit. I haven't heard it. They, so they released the fine. I haven't heard what the findings were, yeah, he's, so he's be, going I'll, to, uh, I'll be Trump's going to get 45 years. He's going no, to jail. That's what was I'll in the report. i excited to hear okay. what he came well, up we'll with. Well, we'll get to that. <laughs> I want to get, I wanna yeah. get to this first subject that I know both of you have a very strong opinion on as do i (laughs) and it involves uh an actor i wish i could say former actor empire actor jesse smollett i'll tell you this story is driving me nuts today all the evidence points towards the fact that we all know that this guy made this whole thing up it is a very serious crime he is a liar he is a scumbag use any word you want to use racist whatever he's all those he's a criminal and he's a felon as far as i'm concerned this was a stunning reversal today in the cook county prosecutor's office dropping all charges that's right i can't believe i'm saying this all charges against this actor for allegedly staging this attack uh mayor rob emanuel who i'm not the biggest fan of in the world i thought he said it right today he called it a whitewash of justice i mean this is it's just it's unreal uh smola appeared unexpectedly in court today and the state's attorney's office issued only a one sentence statement that attempted to explain the about face but only added to the confusion they said well he's you know he's doing some uh some you know uh, two days of community service and he's paying a ten thousand dollar fine so we'll just drop all the charges and what does smollett do that scumbag after all this he's in front of the media says he's told the truth since day one quote that's what he said he said he just wants to get back to his normal life now Just wants to get back to acting. Didn't admit any fault. Didn't admit any wrongdoing. Didn't make any apology to the police department. Nothing. This is what's wrong with our justice department. This is what's wrong with judges who allow this type of nonsense to happen. In my opinion, somebody got paid off. Something doesn't add up. Go ahead. Either either somebody was paid off or there was a small technicality that that the police officer or officers who arrested him really screwed up. And if that was the case, I guarantee you we would have heard about it by now. So I think it's the, it's the latter. That's what I think. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that makes sense to me at this point is, yeah, this, this judge was paid off. First uh, assistant state's attorney, Joseph Magetz, who should be uh, ashamed of himself, okay, took charge of the case after state attorney Kim Fox stepped the pros- aside. The prosecutor is the key here. Yeah, stepped she, aside. There's right, the key. Right. Uh, because of a conflict of interest and said that the office reached an unwritten deal with the defense in recent weeks to drop the charges. If Smollett performed community service, by the way, that's two days of community service. Uh, Maget went on Maget went on to say if he had not done the community service, the charges would not have been dropped. Really? So serious charges like this, you falsify a very, very serious hate crime. You continue to lie about it. You cost the Chicago Police Department taxpayers a ton of money. It makes real hate crimes and the real victims makes it more difficult for them. And all you get for this 
is two days of community service and basically a ten thousand dollar fine. It's about this the, is a joke. It's the worst precedent that I can remember. I mean, am I wrong, guys? It, it, it being sets, this angry about set, this, it sets a terrible precedent. It does. It makes it look like Hollywood is above everybody else. Yeah, it does. Am I it, wrong being this angry? I mean, I'm, it, my blood's boiling about this. It is this one prosecutor that made the now prosec, prosecutors in the police department are at odds all the time in big cities and in little cities. But that that's sort certainly the, the give and take between the two, and that's that's okay. You you want you want to have that mm-hmm. angst between the two. But this is this is uh, that to the the extreme right here. And what you've got is a situation with, with, with this Fox lady. Mm-hmm. Um, who <laughs> recused herself initially because she spent, back. she spent yeah. time with her family. By the way, Jesse Smollett has a very radical, I would call them radical family, mm-hmm. goes back to the Angela Davis Black Panther roots, the mother does, of Jesse Smollett. So I never believed it was about him being able to make a couple of extra bucks on doing that whatever that horrible no. show is they do on Fox. It was about he's from, he's from a radicalized family. He, he, he was trying to start some type of racial he, war. Yes, he's from he, a radical family. He, he was family. trying to start a conflict between two Let races. Let me be clear. And she, she, decided, she decided to go against what her police chief said, what her mayor said, and one gal, one prosecutor, decided not to press charges. That can happen. I mean, that, yeah. that, that does happen let's, sometimes. Let's be clear, but okay? But it's still, it's, a, it's a, a, a grand jury... Put put forth the charges down on this guy, right? Put Sixteen. The, okay. Sixteen and and charges. from what I understand, from what Robbie Manuel said and from the police department said there, that was only a small snippet of the evidence they have, which leads me to they have all the text messages and all the evidence, one hundred percent, that shows that he is the one that staged this. He should be in jail. I'm going to open up the phone lines. I want to know what all your thoughts are on this. I believe the three of us all in studio agree that this man should be behind bars, and this is just a joke. I'll give out the number seven zero two. Two five seven five three nine six. If you want to be a part of the program, we're talking about Jussie Smollett and about how this is just an absolute uh, atrocity as far as our justice system is concerned. This guy Smollett, and maybe there's some of you out there that think this was the right thing. No, they- no, nobody will. Not one person. Only one person on the planet thought this was a good idea, and she was the prosecutor mm-hmm. I, in this case. I and hope that was you're the right. Person on the pl- no, no, nobody in the world will think this is the right thing to do. Either that, or you arrest the two Nigerian brothers. Okay, were they, did they? Those beat two. Him up? Let me tell you they something, Ron. Arrest them. Uh, somebody did so, this. So, so, Ron, who did? Who did the, <laughs> the prosecutor? Represented the police department or the city of Chicago no. or who? And she 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 represented Jesse Smollett actually is who she ended. Up. But but she's supposed to prosecute crimes. No, but but, she but who, who does she work? Who, who pays her? She works the city of Chicago. She so works. She for, probably makes what forty fifty grand a year. Uh, but probably more yeah. than that in the city 60, of Chicago. 70, I, I, I would say that. I would say up there. She, well, look, she, she could yeah. have easily taken a major payoff from this Absol- too. I, I don't know. I don't know. But possibly. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Possibly. The phone lines are going absolutely nuts right now. So why don't we take a couple calls on this? Let me give out the number one more time. Two five seven five three nine six. The number to call again seven zero two two five seven five three nine six. If you want to be a part of the program, we're talking about this Jesse Smollett take, situation. Take line twenty nine. I like that <laughs> call on line twenty nine. Let's go to line forty nine. Let's go to Jim. Jim, thanks for calling into the Vegas Take. How are you? Hey Brian, good to talk to you, man. Good to hear I, from you, Jim. What's I on your need, mind? I need I need to calm myself down here because I, earlier today I was saying some things that <laughs> are not repeatable on the radio. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is an absolute joke. Okay, this is somebody's idea of a cruel, sick joke. Mm-hmm. I agree. Okay, I agree. Um, it's Chicago. So what's going to happen now? No, it's all Chicago. People who who uh, <laughs> lied and and cheated their kids way into college are they going to? get a slap on the wrist and a $10,000 fine, too. You know what, Jim? That's a very good point you bring up, and sadly enough, I bet you they do get a slap on the wrist. Now, their kids aren't probably going to be going to those colleges, but if you are a celebrity, there's no... Look, look, Rob Emanuel said it best, and again, I'm not an Emanuel fan, but he said it best today. He said, look, if it was... Rob Emanuel's a Jewish... a secure justice system uh, yeah. in this country. Rob Emanuel made, a, Emanuel made a very good point. He's a Jewish guy, and he said, you know, if, if, if he staged a swastika... This is what he said on CNN today. If he staged a swastika on the front door of his house, and then it turned out that he did it himself, do you think he would only get two days community service? No, I don't think so. Or no. if it was a regular, everyday person that did something like that, and not this moron, Jesse Smollett? No. The guy's a celebrity. No. He's got money. In jail. Right. Exactly, Jim. And, and we would deserve to be there yeah and not only that you'd be crucified over social media yeah you'd be killed exactly and this guy small let me say anything else if for anyone that hires jesse smollett in the next year they should be ashamed of themselves you know what you know it, it, the bottom line is nobody should be hiring this guy this guy should not be working for years as far as i'm concerned 
Chicago, Chicago. <laughs> ba, ba, da, ba, ba, da, ba. You know it's Chicago. I mean, <laughs> That's what they do there. Well, you I, know, no. Not Ron, right. You had an incident a few years back where you got into a little bump on the freeway. Yes. And what happened to you? You lost your job. And yeah. how long did you have to wait to get another one? Uh, I, 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 uh, it, was two th- it was August 2008, mm-hmm. so which was the worst time in the planet to look for a job here in Las Vegas. But I, yeah. I, I, I fought through it. I bust down the walls. I made it happen. And, and Ron all, can't say this. Dropped and Ron, so, can't, yeah. Ron can't say this, but I did. Uh, Ron, there was a lawsuit involved. And let's just, I, I can't go into specifics, but I, I think I can say this. You can. He, he did okay. Okay. He made some money. I'm not, we're not going to say how much. Uh, I heard it was three point four billion dollars, but I don't, I don't know if that's true. No, <laughs> no but in all seriousness, Jim, uh, you know, Ron, Ron made money off of that, and he got the. He, in the end, he won. I wish. I'm sure he's. He wished well, yeah, he never went end, through he it. Cleared his good name, and, and right. that's yeah. what we all hope for. Sure, for our sure. System. Exactly. No, I, did, you know? I did. I, did, I, I know what it's. Situation. This guy yeah. is clearly guilty. Yeah. And and. He doesn't have a good name anymore. I agree, Jim. Listen, Jim, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go on my social media because I'm very curious at the names you called him at your TV today. I know you can't say it on the radio. I, I'm just curious. <laughs> Send it to me through email. Jim, good to hear from you. I appreciate it. I thanks for the call, Jim. Have a good one. I, thanks, I, I Jim. Do, yes, I do know what it's like to be wrongly accused, so I'm sort of my yes. spidey senses are out there on that because I, I yeah. get that part. Yeah. But, and at the same time, I did warn my former employer. Yes. Uh, TV, a TV station here in town, not the one obviously I'm working for now, but I did warn them if they did fire me over this that I would pursue legal action. And, and then, as you, I'm s- glad as you, you said, from, yes. what, from what the newspaper reports were, mm-hmm. that there w- was a settlement. I can't acknowledge yes. that there was or wasn't. I but, can acknowledge there was. Yeah. There was a settlement, and you ended up the winner. 257 5396 is the number to call. 702 257 5396. Talking about this scumbag, Jesse Smollett. And the fact that all charges were dropped, two days of community service, it is a joke. It is nonsense. Let's go to J.D. J.D., thanks for calling in. How are you? What's up, J.D.? Doing great, guys. Hello, everybody. Two quick points. I'm going to start the conspiracy ball rolling. Uh, Miss uh, Tina Chen, C-H-E-N, the former chief of staff to Michelle Obama, was reported in Chicago today. Her text messages to this uh, attorney, uh, state attorney Kim Fox, and it was implicit that uh, they do something about this. So we have the Obama chief of staff for uh, Michelle uh, sending text messages to her. This judge, this uh, this uh, attorney uh, judge, I guess whatever she is, uh, also had contact on text messages with the family of Shamalette, Shem- and she was supported by George Soros as a social. Justice. All right. Well, J.D., uh, hang on. Hang on. Yeah. Okay. I understand what you're saying, J.D., but I want to focus on the judge. I don't want to focus on who who's who who was supported, whether it was Obama. Uh, Kim, Fox, you know, Kim Fox is the one that that that. Uh, yes. The prosecutor freedom. was the key here. Yeah. And let's blame Fox and, you know, let's blame the judge. Let's put it on them. I don't want to get out of the out of the bubble here and, no, and but, make it but, political. But J.D. is right. Smollett had actual connections to Obama. There, there are several pictures with him and, and okay. Obama's family. But, but, but to me, that means nothing. What matters to me is the prosecutor like and the judge. What does it mean nothing, Brian? Brian, Brian some, something like this, it, 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 reeks, it reeks of something coming down from above and just eliminating it. it really uh, who's, there are th- who's, more, who's more connected in Chicago than the Obamas? And when the former chief of staff to Michelle makes a phone call to Look. Kim Fox, who is the prosecutor on the case, obviously something is funny. In okay. I, and again, and again, J.D., I understand what you're saying, but I, I want to focus on who we know so, is so at fault J- here. J.D., when you say conspiracy theory, are, are, you, are you recommending or are, are you thinking that possibly George Soros and Jesse Smut were working together? I, I already hung up on J.D. That's why I was, I was making that. Reference with my neck, so he did make it. He did, but it does explain what JD was saying. It yeah. does explain why it would a prosecutor. Uh, th- that's Marsha Clark. She's a prosecutor. Okay, mm-hmm. you go after people, and you, and you don't. You're junkyard dog. You don't right. let up. She decided for some reason to. Eh, well, not so much. Um, yeah. Yeah. Friend of the family. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna guess uh, p- mm-hmm. political and and social and and or, uh, racial. Um, Situations are very similar, if not identical, um, in in the situations here, and and she decided it was best but, for best for the city of Chicago, mm-hmm. uh, without consult. By the way, without consulting the chief of police, yeah, right. usually there is some discussion that would take place. No, I what understand. What sort of evidence I, do you have? What do you have? And, I, I guess the point I'm happen. trying to make, though, is I want to blame the people that we know are at fault here. Yeah. We know that it was Fox. We know that it was the judge. Let's let's focus on that. Let's take a couple more calls here. Uh, L L, thanks for calling into the Vegas Take. How are you? Hi guys, how are you doing? Good. Hi, L. What's on okay. your mind? 
I just want to say this. We continue to be shocked. We continue to be outraged when these things happen. This is just another reminder of what money can buy. Mm-hmm. It can't buy love. It can't buy happiness. <laughs> Everything else is up for grabs. And yeah. why are we always so surprised when these things happen? You have to have – you can buy anything. And, mm-hmm. and I'm sure somebody – money changed hands, and here we go again. Well, that is very true. You could also make the argument that O.J. Simpson got off on double murder because he was famous and because he had money and a lot of other Absolutely. celebrities. Absolutely. He eventually uh, paid his price, though. Yeah, and, and, small, and this well, young man will, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess that's our – I mean, I still think O.J. should be behind bars for the rest of his life for what he did. But, no, that, yeah, but no, I understand. But at, least he, but at least he got – is just that you cannot kill people and just walk away. Well, you're right, and, I, and in no way you're right, and that, in no, that's a very <laughs> valid point. And in, yeah, it is, and in no way am I saying Smollett's a murderer, but certainly it was a serious crime, and he belongs behind bars. Yeah, I, I, yeah. yeah. but I, I would say Smollett. Outrageous, but he paid for it. He sure. Got it, so. You're right. Good evening, guys. Thank you. Yeah, I, so. I, good to hear I, from I, you. I would say Smollett is a terrorist. Uh, yeah, uh well, if you're if you're a true, I, I if consider, you're a true, I consider I, that to be an absolute attempted. Or attempt of terrorism. I wouldn't say he's beheading people. I wouldn't say he's from ISIS, but I certainly think he deserves to be behind bars for a few years and think about what he did. The, the thing that makes me more angry than anything, J.D., is afterwards today when he spoke in front of the media, and of course he's a coward, he wouldn't answer questions, he said, I've been telling the truth since day one. Is there anybody in the right mind that believes that? What a joke. Let's go to Mark. He's, he's a victim again, Brian. <laughs> what a joke. Brian, he's, no, he's, yeah. a, he, he's he no victim. He's himself as a victim again. He's no victim. Let's, mm-hmm. go to, let's go to Marge. Marge, thanks for going into the Vegas take. How are you? Hey, Marge. Hi. Um, I, I have to admit that I'm an escapee from Chicago area, so I know it Oh, well. <laughs> bless you. Wow. You've, you've uh, sweet home, Chicago. You've survived. Yeah. And all the politics that go on there, it's, it's unreal. But it's interesting because following some of the, something like this, of course I, I do, um, there were two state attorneys, former state attorneys, that said that they've never seen anything like this. It's very unprecedented. Yeah. But um, here's the key. What I found very interesting that I heard is that, you know, the community service that he did over the weekend, it was done for a rainbow push. Now, who's in charge of rainbow push mm. but the Reverend Jesse, Jesse Jackson? Yeah. Talk about, you know, being the influence in the Chicago area. I'm sure that a few phone calls were made, and, and that was the end of it. Mm. And, and to have eradicated the records, just keeping the $10,000 for that bond, um, and saying, okay, two days of community service, I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous. I agree. I mean, I don't care if you gave him two years of community service. The guy deserves jail time. Absolutely. And his acting career, as far as I'm concerned, for the next five years should be over. Give him a couple years of jail. Make him think about what right. he did. And then when he comes out, let's hear a real well, true apology. W- what, if, what if he wasn't caught and people thought that this actually happened? You already saw the responses from, from a lot of yeah. you know, high-ranking people politicians well, and i don't have a problem with that because when i really don't when, when, when you hear of something like this happen so the other side could have been really really bad for the united states of america yeah. and chicago which is I agree. already in a very in, in huge trouble i agree yeah. with that i guess the point i'm trying to make is i am not going to and, and by the way marge thank you for the call it's Thanks, good, marge. Good, good to hear from you I guess the point I'm trying to make, guys, is that I'm not going to blame someone for believing him. I mean, who in their right mind could think that somebody could do something like this and make it up? I mean, come on. you got to have some compassion here. Now, I'm not saying you should rush to judgment, but I think the first thing you should say is, well, this is a horrible thing. It needs to be investigated. We all are on his side on this one. It's, it's terrible. Yeah, it, it was it was a little too perfect. I'm going to put that in air quotes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Too perfect. Uh, I, my spidey senses went up immediately. I'm going yeah. to say that. Well, when you heard that, did. a couple of African Just, Americans in the middle of the night when it's 20 degrees outside from another country are wearing a MAGA hat that I guess that well, raised some suspicion or, or that or that <laughs> on a minus 15 degree yeah. day someone's waiting outside yeah. the studio with a noose yeah, that who, was ha- a, who happens to be wearing a, make, a, a right. MAGA hat going after some guy who's a D-list celebrity you get, come you're, on you're, you're yeah. going yeah. to Chicago you're going yeah. to Chicago at that yeah. time of the morning no, you're going, to, some, sub- well, you're going some... to Subway and, <laughs> and and the fact that uh, people in Chicago uh, there weren't a whole lot of Obama voters in Chicago so they're yeah. not wearing the MAGA hat so all the spidey senses went up in my in my mind, right I understand off the what you're saying. Go, uh, sounds fishy. I understand sounds what you're fishy. saying. The anger should not be at the politicians who came to his defense. It should be to Jesse Smollett. He's the one who did this. Let's go to Fred. Fred, thanks for calling into the Vegas take. How are you? Hey, Fred. Do we have another dropped call? There it goes again. Another drop call. Oh, well. Fred, call back if you can. We've been having some issues with the phone lines. 257-5396. Can we get the Blue brother, Blues Brothers <laughs> Sweet Home Chicago? <laughs> Maybe. I'm in the mood for some. Ron, but this is Chicago politics. I would like politics. that more than anything else right No, this now. needs some Sweet that, Home that, Chicago. That would make me so happy. Great old Robert Johnson song. Should we take some and, more calls? 
The, the, this is Chicago <laughs> politics as most the most at its most corrupt. But it's come on. They they elected they elected um, JFK with dead people voting in the '60s. Nah, so there you go. I don't want to talk about JFK. He's not here anymore. What, was Carl Winslow involved in this at all? <laughs> I don't know. Well, Kelvin was. Let me give out the number one more time. <laughs> uh, I apologize if you, if, if uh, the, the line dropped on you. We'd be having some issues with the phone lines. Two five seven five three nine six. The number to call again seven zero two two five seven five three nine six. Let's go to Gary. Gary, thanks for calling in. How are you? Hey, Brian, what I like about you is that you're an independent guy. I don't like it that you hate Donald Trump, but uh, I I do like that, what do you call it, you take a lot of phone calls. And uh, I love the last caller when she used that uh, word, SKP. Yeah. An SKP from Chicago. That's a (laughs) different one from uh, Refugee. That's right. I I love that. Uh, Listen, I'm going to try to be fair. You guys are always hanging up on me, and so does everyone else on the radio, but that's okay. (laughs) Wait, wait, hold on. Everyone else hangs up on you, too? (laughs) What? I thought thought we were special. Let me make my point, please. Go ahead. Come on, man. Go ahead, Gary. I'm a hero. I was a veteran. Go if ahead. Hero, don't hang up on me. Um, uh, I, I, like, give it, me don't seconds. take it. I will give you thirty seconds. But Gary, if we ever do hang up on you, don't take it personal. We get a lot of phone calls. We we have to go from call to call. Go ahead, Gary. That's why I'm not angry and why I call back. <laughs> okay, right, thank I love you. the producer. I right, listen. Um, <laughs> just for laughs and giggles, when March Madness is over, can we lighten up on the basketball and can we have just for laughs and giggles? JD and JD uh, show, and you take a day off, bro. JD, <laughs> see that's JD. You see, Gary. Now you wonder why I hang up on you. That's why. <laughs> anyway, I can't, no, Gary. I, I appreciate the call. I appreciate the call, Gary. He, he wants you locked in the closet again. You know, I would love to talk whip and ERA. <laughs> Please and designated don't. hitters with J.D. for like <laughs> no, three hours. No, don't do that. That would be wonderful. Let's go to Kelly. Kelly, thanks for calling into the Vegas Take. How are you? Good. How are you? Doing good, Kelly. What's on your mind, hey, Kelly? I have been livid all day about this thing. As have I. I mean, it is beyond the pale that this guy got off. I mean, you know, it's not a conspiracy theory that uh, about the whole uh, Obama chief of staff thing. I mean, that's a fact. Everyone knows that. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything about the text messages and uh, this whole, uh, you know, community service with the rainbow thing. That That's news to me, too. But, you know. Interesting I mean, news. Just uh, the Rahm Emanuel, you know, I, I listened to the, you know, Jesse Smollett's speech, his lawyer's speech, Rahm Emanuel, the police chief. I, I listened to the whole thing. And, I mean, the fact that they did, did this underhandedly, I mean, even the police chief and Rahm Emanuel, the mayor of the city of Chicago, did not even get a heads up that this was happening. He had mm-hmm. to find it out on the news. I mean, come on. Yeah, I mean, this yeah. is not this is not Rob Emanuel. Yeah, and Rob Emanuel, I, I agreed with, by the way, everything he said on TV today, and, and usually I never say that, but he's 100% right. This yeah. is a joke. It, and he's done a terrible job of, a job of Chicago. It's a war zone. It's completely broke. But this is not his fault. I agree. My, my issue with this is that now this is going to happen again. It's going to keep happening. Nothing well, happened to this guy. I hated... I, I think the thing for me that made me so angry was, you know, besides the fact that he's getting off scot-free, uh, you know, with a $10,000 fine, basically, and uh, his records are sealed. So there's actually no record that happened in the media. But for me, it was the fact that he, in his speech, his little prepared speech, yeah. he plays the victim. Ding, ding, ding. You're right, Kelly. The and uh, the entire yeah, time. You're right. He's done that the entire time. He's played the victim. And you know what? You know who the victims are in this case? And by the way, Kelly, good to hear from you. Thank you for the call. The, uh, the, the real victims are the ones that actually are victims of hate crimes, right? Those are the real victims. The real victims are the taxpayers that had to pay... For this good investigative work, by the way, I give them all the credit in the world. They did a good job, the investigators in this case, the real victims, okay? And and maybe I shouldn't call them victims because they're also idiots because they went along with this. But those two men who were paid to do this, who actually spent more time behind bars than Jesse Smollett, and then they decided, isn't that, isn't that crazy? The crazy thing about this whole story, right? The two people that actually did this because Smollett hired them to do it. They spent more time behind bars than Jesse Smollett. I, I would say the actual victims here are those who have been victims of hate crimes. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. And, and, and in the long run, it, it hurts uh, real victims. Uh, let's try to squeeze in one more call before we take a quick break. Let's go to Brian. Brian, thanks for calling in. How are you? I'm doing good, guys. How are you guys doing? Doing good, doing Brian. Great, What's Brian. on your mind? Uh, not only was 
the mayor blindsided and the, and the chief of police and all of his officers that stood behind them today. I mean, they were shell shocked. Yeah. I watched that. I was I, 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 like everybody that's called in. I was livid when I heard this. And I thought like J.D. did, there has to be some technicality somewhere that they had to do this. But that's not true. I've been running over everything all day today. This is a fix from the word go. And not only did uh, Miss Chen uh, talk to the Miss Kim Fox, who's supposed to have been recused about something uh, the, of the family was concerned about, but she also told the police chief, Miss Fox, after talking to Miss Chen, that he needs to turn this whole matter over to the FBI. Hmm. Yeah, she had him in his office for an hour. Yep, and told him. That he needed to do this, and you know what, Brian? That's that's why he came around, Mr. Maggot. And that's a good point, Brian. That's an excellent point, and I I agree with you. I think what what we can say about Jesse Smollett, and we only have about another minute here. I'm up against a hard break. What we can say about Smollett is that we know that he has absolutely and positively no truth in his body. He is a fraud. He is a piece of garbage. We can also say that he has some friends in some pretty high places. Yeah, he, well, he absolutely well, does. And, and he's would, got money. I would like, he mentions, the caller mentions the FBI. The FBI should look at that letter that was sent to him initially. Now, they can yeah. look at it independently of Chicago if they sure. want no, and right. take a look at that initial letter because mm-hmm. it's pretty clear that that one was bogus. Sweet home, Chicago. <laughs> there Brian, is Chicago lawlessness, Brian, folks. took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> yes. Our only hope is the feds come in and do this. Yeah, they I, could. Brian, Brian, I am with you, my man. Good call. Always good to hear from you, my man. Appreciate the phone call. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we will take more of your calls. We got Peter, John, uh, Dave, and Jesse on hold. <laughs> we'll be back with those calls right after this. You're listening to the Vegas Take on the all new 101.5 FM, 720 AM, K Dawn.